Hey everybody, it's Chris from Beer Bearings. Welcome back. It's time for another Beer of the Week here on the channel. And uh, this week I'm going to be talking about an oatmeal stout from Rally Cap Brewing out in Baton Rouge. And it's actually called Failed T-Shirt Company Oatmeal Stout. And this week it is almost baseball season, which is why I'm wearing my Washington Nationals jersey and also why I've chosen Rally Cap. Rally Cap is also a baseball themed brewery, which you'll be able to see on the can design. And also if you're not familiar, a Rally Cap is uh, when your team is down or when, when you're playing on a team that's down in the late innings of a baseball game, it's an old tradition in baseball to take your hat, turn it inside out and wear it that way for luck. Uh, only in the dugout, you can't get away with that when you're on the field. So that's what a rally cap is. Uh, rally cap and I haven't been out there. They just opened in December of 2019 officially, which is of course right before the pandemic started. So I haven't been out there, but I've seen some great photos and some photos that people have posted. And they've got a really kind of a sports bar theme going on in their tap room, uh, which looks really interesting. They've got baseball stitching painted across the ceiling. So can't wait to get out there. So let's talk a little bit about the beer and let me open it and give it a little sniff and a swirl and a taste for you. It's called Failed T-Shirt Company Oatmeal Stout, actually. And they say that that's what they were for a couple of years, it was a failed T-Shirt Company. I'm pouring it into a no-nick pint and I'm gonna let that settle just a bit like I did last week. I call it a no-nick pint and I think that's the closest way to pronounce that to probably what was intended. It's actually an American design, but if you've ever been to the UK, you've seen this glass. You've seen uh, in lots of English pubs, they will serve in an imperial pint like this. This is an imperial pint, 20 ounces roughly, uh, bigger than a 16 ounce American pint. It's got a little bubble or a little uh, bulge on the outside of it that makes it actually a little bit easier to hold. But also when you stack them, the idea was that it doesn't nick the rim, uh, so therefore no nick. And again, actually an American design adopted in English pubs and still in use today, at least it was the last time I was over there. It's been too long, so I gotta get back. So it's an oatmeal stout. I think it's settled enough to get a little taste, so let me do that. It's really got a nice smooth, just kind of mild stout malt. use a baseball term right down the middle. It's a sweet stout, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We've talked about lactose and things before. No lactose in this one, but it still falls in the sweet stout family because it's an oatmeal stout. They're not intended to be too much of any one thing. Not too bitter, not too roasty, not too alcoholic, 5.8% on this one, which is definitely right in the range for a sweet stout or for a, an oatmeal stout has a really nice flavor, a little bit of a hint of chocolate, a little roastiness, uh, just a touch of roasty bitterness on the background, or at the back end, I should say, and uh, just a delicious beer. As you can see, it's a beautiful kind of really dark brown, maybe has some ruby highlights, as, uh, as you hear sometimes when we talk about dark beers and stouts. So, I'm gonna finish pouring it. What's an oatmeal stout all about? And why is it called a sweet stout? So it definitely falls in the sweet stout family. We have talked about actual sweet stouts, I'm gonna say, or, or uh, milk stouts, where there's actually no milk in the stout, but lactose is used. Lactose is non-fermentable by most beer yeasts, and so therefore the sweetness remains behind in the beer. This is not that, although in this particular instance, oatmeal is used, and oatmeal provides a little bit of body, a little bit of uh, flavor, a little bit of that kind of oatmeal sweetness uh, that you might associate with a bowl of oatmeal. It's pretty much the same ingredient. And it's just really there to kind of give it some, I'm gonna say balance. It, this, this style is supposed to be balanced, refreshing, just an easy drinker, nice one to sip on maybe while you're watching that ball game. Sweet stout started to come along kind of toward the end of the 19th century when brewers in England started using lactose and also oatmeal in stouts to make them appear more healthful, there was actually a pretty significant portion of the medical community that recommended stouts of all kinds for invalids and even nursing mothers and so on as a way to maintain strength 
as a way to get back appetite. So things like lactose and oatmeal were added to stouts to give the impression that they were more wholesome and healthy. Stouts took a bit of a hit after World War I and again World War II. Essentially, grain was in short supply, other brewing supplies were in short supply, needed to be given to the war effort. Stouts really fell off, and that trend continued into the 20th century. And ultimately, stouts started to make a little bit of a comeback, and certainly Guinness held on. Samuel Smith's oatmeal stout is probably responsible for popularity and the continued popularity of oatmeal stouts in this country. So when we can, we can head back out to Baton Rouge, we can get to Rally Cap. In the meantime, it's available in the New Orleans market if you live here, and you can find it actually all along the sort of corridor between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Uh, they have different styles for sure. If this is not your thing, there are definitely some lighter lagers and other beers that are available. There's a East Coast style IPA, and there's also one, I think they still make it, it's kind of a, I think they call it the Short Hop IPA, another baseball reference. And that is one that's kind of between West Coast and East Coast. So um, all good stuff. And if you get a chance to get out there, tell them hello, have some of their beer. I really hope you'll come back again next week. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's Beer of the Week here on the Facebook page. If you're watching me on Facebook, please invite your friends to come on over and join the discussion. If you are watching on YouTube, I would love it if you would like and subscribe to the channel and keep coming back for more. Either way, tell me what you did or did not like in the comments below. Tell me what's in your glass, and I'll see you next week right back here on Beer of the Week.